our capstone presentation by Laura Paw. Uh, Laura has done what we love to see happen. She has used the courses throughout her program to help her develop her capstone project. And so she has done a really great job. It's been a pleasure working with her, and I'll let her tell you all about it. Great, thank you, Amber. I'm Laura Hall, and my capstone, which was completed for at the University of Indianapolis here, consisted of two six-week projects, one occurring in the fall of 2015 and one this summer of 2016. The purpose of both projects were to bring fur music to older adults with dementia in the hopes of reducing disruptive behavior and increasing well-being. There were slight variations in the projects with approach and data collection. Dementia affects more than 35 million people worldwide, and there are over 100 diseases that cause it, and over 5 million Americans are suffering with Alzheimer's disease, the leading cause of dementia. The Indiana Plan for Alzheimer's Disease and Related Dementias estimates that there are 120,000 Indiana residents suffering from it and are expecting an increase of 20% by 2020. Cognitive impairment and isolation can occur with dementia, and that can cause anxiety, agitation, wandering, repetitive verbalizations, and general confusion. In addition, it can cause sleep issues and refusal of care. When refusal of care happens, sometimes the person needs to be institutionalized if they're not there already, and then the change in environment can exacerbate symptoms more. But when it is necessary to institutionalize them, then preferred music can be used to make the environment more familiar to them. Dementia is expensive. It's estimated $236 billion spent on Alzheimer's disease in the United States, and 15 million caregivers are providing over $18 billion in unpaid care with an estimated value of $221 billion. And caregivers often have to work overtime, take another job, postpone retirement or return to work, and miss vacations because of caretaking duties. The other miscellaneous expenses that fall outside of health insurance coverage can cause anxiety and sleep deprivation for the caregivers also, and that can reduce their health. With the financial expense and the reduction in the caregiver health, then that can affect the patient's well-being. Cognitive impairment for the patient with dementia also makes them susceptible to financial abuse. Person-centered care can reduce the costs of health care by reducing the need for medications because they can target the care for each patient and put the resources and efforts toward that. Music is an easy way to redirect a patient in order to get them the care that they need. 30% of music played from a person's childhood has been shown to bring back joyful autobiographical memories. And those with severe dementia can sing along with songs and even recognize if a wrong note is played. When caregivers and patients share in the music, it can also increase the caregiver bond. Music players with preferred music can lower cost and increase joy, provide stress relief, enhance the bond between caregiver and patient, trigger joyful reminiscence, and reduce disruptive behavior. Since the time of Aristotle and Plato, many have believed in the healing powers of music. The ancient Greeks believe that the study of music was foundation to the study of philosophy and to attaining wisdom. And Plato once said, music and rhythm find their way into the secret places of the soul. Mesmer, who was a student of Freud, he believed in the healing powers of music and he actively incorporated that into care for his patients with colorful clothing and dramatic personality, singing to them and playing instruments for them. The term mesmerizing came from his activities and the effects on patients. And other musicians followed suit and started visiting hospitals to entertain veterans after World War I.
my grandmother had Alzheimer's disease. And one time when I was visiting her, she did not recognize me and she was in a catatonic state. And I was rambling on, not knowing what to say. And I stumbled upon triggering a memory. I said to her, you know, Grandma, I can't have a cup of hot tea without thinking of you. And with that, she lifted out of her wheelchair, which I didn't realize she could even do, turned to me, looked me in the eye, and hugged me and told me she loved me. And my jaw dropped. I couldn't think of anything else to say. I was so shocked. Before I knew it, she was back in that catatonic state and sat down. And I always wondered what else I could have said or done you know, to keep that moment a little longer. So when I watched the um, Alive Inside documentary for a spirituality and aging course, it really hit home, and I wanted to do something similar. So I was also taking a research methods course with the University of Indianapolis. And I wrote a Music and Dementia paper for that course. And the next course that I took was a grant writing course and decided to use my research to write a grant. And when I received the grant, the University of Indianapolis administered that for me. Both projects consisted of two six-week projects that totaled an approximate cost of $3,500. And the grant was submitted in July and awarded in September, and the first project took place in October through December at the Indiana Masonic Home. When that came in, $200 under budget, the Johnson County Community Foundation allowed me to apply that to the second project. So in February, I wrote a request for an early investigator scholarship from the Alzheimer's Association and was awarded that in April and that allowed the project two to begin in May and June of 2016. There were 76 players that were provided to the facilities because of the generosity of the Johnson County Community Foundation and Alzheimer's Association, and the projects differed in one was a preferred song list and the other was for genres, a comparison of different genres to see the effects. The literature review involved various studies. They included exercise, art, which was songwriting, painting, making instruments, group, which was singing and dancing, playing instruments, live music, such as a guitar player or a music therapist who used the parameters of tempo and mode to increase social engagement and reduce anxiety and relax the residents. There was also name that tune and musical bingo games in these studies. And many of them also were, like this project, listening to recorded music. For the Indiana Masonic Home Project, there were 38 residents involved, and we provided a list of suggested songs of approximately 90 songs on a spreadsheet with links to YouTube so that the caregiver could play a sampling and try to determine the favorites for the resident. And in addition to that, we provided a preferred music determination questionnaire. And then there, one of the studies had 214 nurses in Taiwan who believed in the benefits of music, but they felt that they did not have the resources or the knowledge to implement a music program. So I created the caregiver presentation in order to explain the process to the caregivers of the Masonic Home and to increase the likelihood of success with this project. Then there was a caregiver survey at the end of the six weeks. With this project, they chose approximately 15 songs, plus there was a Christmas album since Christmas time was upon us. And the music was downloaded to each player with Amazon. There were 20 caregivers who had overlapping responsibilities for the residents there. The photos here are from an article that the Daily Journal published in December about the Masonic Home Project. The preferred music determination questionnaire, in addition to asking the resident themselves, suggested that they ask family and friends, they find out the genre preferences, was the person religious, were they a fan of the theater, did they have music, favorite musical artists, did they hum or sing favorite tunes, and was there songs that were specific to their childhood, like parents' preferences or a wedding song that we could add to the player. And the caregiver log here had, you see, up at the top, the behavior or mood prior and after, the date and time, 
the song that they were listening to, and then other comments with caregiver name. This is a word cloud for the negative state of being descriptors that we hope to reduce from the project, for and the anxious being the most common, larger, and more often it was on the caregiver log. And then after, we saw more like calm, smiling, happy, and singing. To evaluate the project success, I looked at each caregiver log sheet and rated them from zero no success to five extremely successful. The top three successful, very successful, and extremely successful, but the Indiana Masonic Home Project, 87% fell in those top three categories. This is the state of being descriptors before and after the music sessions. You'll see an increase in the positive qualities and a decrease in the negative. Communicative increased by 15%. Alert 2%. Calm 27% increase. Excited 11%. Happy 29%. Cooperative 11%. Singing, 13% increase, and engaged, 24%. Correspondingly, the negative, the uncommunicated dropped to zero by 35%. Anxious dropped 14%. Depressed was reduced by 15% and agitated by 13%. The duration of positive effects were broken into three categories for this project. An hour, several hours, and the rest of the day. 50% was an hour and 50% more than an hour with 14% lasting the rest of the day. Crossing project, there were 28 residents and it was a comparison of genres with their preferred music genres. The activities director chose one to three genres for each person that would be considered a preferred genre for them. Caregiver survey was also completed at the end and it differed from the other project. Instead of assigning it to each particular person, they assigned it to a room. So when new people move in, they will update it to, to match their preferences. It was also downloaded to a facilities account through iTunes rather than to each player individually with Amazon. The genres that were compared is the 1940s. In the army now, I go and revelry. The fifties. One for the money, two for the show. Will you get ready now? Go Sixties. So God, say the last dance for me. Big hand. Christian. Person. In addition, there was generic Greek and German patriotic and show tunes genres considered, but they weren't included in the genre comparison because of low sample sizes. The negative state of being descriptors for the second project were loud, roaming, and agitated that we were hoping to reduce. And there was a balance of smiling, happy, tapping, singing, listening, and calm after the music listening session. And for rating, for success, the top three successful, very successful, and extremely successful, there were 75% that fell in those top three categories. Based on information taken from the caregiver surveys, you'll see on these qualities and how the music affected the mood, the majority were conversational with caregivers, calm, happy, reminiscent, and joyful. The duration of positive effects had more categories with this project. It was dur during music session, less than an hour, an hour, a couple of hours, several hours, and the rest of the day. 64% was an hour or longer, and 36% was two or more hours. 
a genre comparison. Most of the positive was from the 40s, the 50s, the 40s at 50 percent, 50s at 64 percent, the classical at 50 percent, and the preferred at 48 percent. Classical was 50 percent, however, it was 48 percent with preferred, but there was a 9 percent negative rate versus zero for preferred. Country had an 8 percent negative and a 36% positive. The classical, even the 9% negative, included those who had classical music as a genre. The country music was surprising that it had the 8% um, negative compared to what we found with the Masonic Home Project, but the country music was more modern than it was with the Masonic Home. Line dance was surprising at 44% because only two people had that as a preferred genre. So 95% of the positive feedback came from those who didn't have that as a preferred genre. That could be due to the upbeat nature of the music and also because it's difficult to determine people's preferred genres and preferred music you know, from a lifetime of experiences. Most of the negative was due to sadness, you know, bringing back memories, although a lot of people embraced that sadness and were happy to be experiencing those feelings. Daniel Patton that I interviewed, she was with IU Health and implemented a program in the Northwest Manor Healthcare Center. She mentioned something similar with someone who had a brother that was a singer and the lady still liked listening to the brother sing even though it brought sad memories back. Another issue with, that would fall into the negative was difficulties with the headsets and hearing. One time a resident began wondering, feeling that they were young again and wanting to go home, and another didn't want to stop listening to the music to go eat. So that fell into the negative also, although it's not necessarily a negative. There were, the negative outcomes were isolated and the majority of outcomes very positive. And these are some of the songs that were, well, they were in the top 15 popular, most popular songs chosen from those at the Masonic Home, and the word cloud is from the first, the second project at the Heart of the Crossing, showing the 40s and 50s were very popular. There was a song that I hesitated to put on the suggested list, but went ahead and did, and it was this one. <laughs> I thought that it might bring back too many sad memories for many, so I had this as a tent, but then it came back as one of the most popular songs and no negative feedback on that. The comparison of caregiver surveys, very different for each. They were almost identical in questions when I sent them in, but they were answered like disruptive behavior being reduced. 100% of the caregivers said that disruptive behavior was reduced for the people that they cared for. With the 89% reduced disruptive behavior, the way that the questionnaire was answered for the Hearth of Stones Crossing is it was the activities director answering it for each and every person. So it's saying there was reduced disruptive behavior for 89% of the people rather than 100% of the caregivers saying there was disruptive behavior. And the same with listen with the resident and the increased bonding. And the same is true for the next slide caregiver burden was reduced for 100%, so some of the patients did have a reduction It reduced the caregiver burden with 100% answering there was that, but 57% of the patients, so it's a more specific number on the heart that sends crossing. But overall, well-being was increased and will continue to play the in the same way the caregivers 100% said they will continue to play, but that doesn't necessarily mean for every single patient, whereas the 93% shows a 7%, she won't continue to play, and she said that was due to hearing difficulties. Music helped with pain, stimulated physical response, and brought calm and serenity to, to the environment. Often residents are bored, and music provides a distraction that they can engage in. TV is too difficult for them to process, but their memory for music seems unaffected by dementia. Music was used as an alternative to medication at times. And from the heart that stones crossing, 
She said if one resident had a great number of pleasant memories than before the music, another was easier to toilet, redirect, and converse with during and after sessions for up to an hour, another played more songs on the piano from memory after listening to the music player, and some family members noticed changes with mood and communication and requested that the player for listening with the resident. In addition to that, there were a couple of caregivers that came forward with some uh, joyful tears, and that was because one had taken care of a patient for two years, and they did not speak with her, and they began speaking in full sentences after listening to the music player. And then another um, said there was a patient that was near passing, and she, while listening to the music, began calling out to departed loved ones and saying, take the Lord, I'm ready. And she said she ate well for the rest of the day, was alert and happy, and passed away within 48 hours. So it seems she had accepted death. Expanding music player possibilities, charitable donations to the facilities could help with increasing the song selection, and also family and friends could add to that. With line dance and Christian music being a surprise, that shows again the need for identifying those specific triggers for the person. With 87% success rate for the Masonic Home and 75% for the Harthic Stones Crossing, I would suggest that it's because of how specific it was more specific than it was for the other because we were spending time playing different genres and everyone had their headsets on but like all one time they'd all be listening to German and the next time to patriotic and the next time you know to country so there was more time spent listening to the preferred music with the first project than the second also with the other project they put in specifics like favorite plays and we were able to download a specific album from that play for them for their play. Headsets were a challenge. In the studies that I read and also with the interview with Daniel Green, a lot of them had difficulties with that. And you can try earbuds, but speakers may be necessary, but then you need to be careful not to agitate others with music that they don't want to hear. Also, the group music sessions can be used. Now that the preferences have been determined, the preferred genres for the residents that they can do group sessions and share that music to increase social engagement. Language issue, we had one lady that was from Japan who we were able to download Japanese traditional music for her which helped with that success. Hearing difficulties again, one gentleman, he had his hearing aid repaired and he still couldn't hear, so whenever they would try to play it, it just caused him to be agitated. For the Heart That Stones Crossing, we had considered creating a preferred list, having three weeks of the genre comparison, and then three weeks, take half of them and have a preferred list too. But I found that that was impossible to do without bias once the program was in place, because to go up to the player when they're listening to a song that they like would have changed the outcome of the genre itself. Confidentiality was maintained through using numbers on the players and on the caregiver logs, and also getting consent for the photos. And the storage possibilities from the interview with Daniel and from a presentation that she gave about the implementation. Putting the players in a metal storage cabinet with a hole drilled in the back and a charging unit inside, that way they could be secure and charging and then having the headsets in baggies and alcohol swabs available is a way to keep it safe and secure. The Daily Journal published a front page article regarding the Indiana Masonic Home Project in December, and then a Kiwanis Club um, presentation for the Greenwood Kiwanis um, occurred in February. The links to the music used on the first project is on agingsuccess.org and has been promoted posted out on Twitter and Facebook. The Johnson County Community Foundation and Alzheimer's Association will receive information about the outcomes of these studies. And a project poster was displayed at the 2016 Alzheimer's Association Conference reception 
and Alzheimer's Association statewide education conference in Maine about these projects. In addition, the Alzheimer's Association Greater Indiana Chapter is sponsoring the Spirit in Place event November 10, and that event includes a viewing of the documentary Alive Inside, which started all of this, and an interactive music exploration for attendees by using music players from the Heart That Stones Crossing, and a panel discussion where outcomes of this project will be discussed. One of the studies that I read said a facilitator requested from residents of their facility to suggest songs that match the season. And sometimes they weren't able to you know, suggest the songs for the appropriate season. And it made me wonder if you know it could be Christmas all year, especially for those with severe dementia and who consider Christmas music a preferred genre for them. And then nature music, I would include that in doing a, a genre comparison again. And photographs, they said in one study that conversation and photographs are useful, but for <coughs> retrieving lyrics, music is really needed. And I think that photographs might be good also. Those that are personalized for the person could be helpful on those players and has the, that capacity. Facility and resident ownership. I think that those players that are owned by a specific person Family and friends would be more likely to add music and photographs to those. But the facility could ask for CD donations and play things in a group setting. One study mentioned that there are hormonal and immunological system benefits when singing rather than listening. And so for people out in the community that are isolated as well as in the nursing facilities, it would be beneficial to have singing groups. This project has increased an understanding of the ease of implementing a music listening program, benefits of preferred music for the patients with dementia, and how behavior, mood, and well-being are affected. It will provide caregivers with knowledge that may continue to reduce caregiver burden and increase well-being in older adults with dementia. And here are the references. A big thank you to my advisor, Tamara Wolski, for her uh, guidance, and to the other teachers in the gerontology program, and to the Johnson County Community Foundation and Alzheimer's Association for their support, to the Indiana Masonic Home, and especially Daniel Green and Sandy Corum, along with the many caregivers, to the Heart That Stones Crossing with Crystal Young and her assistant, Gidget Spurlock, to Daniel Patton for the interview, and about the implementation at Northwest Healthcare Center, and my husband who used his experience as a DJ to help with song suggestions, <laughs> downloading the music, and creating the snippets for this presentation. And thank you all for your interest and time today. Just the one that was about conversation and how it was less likely to trigger lyrics, to come up with lyrics. So listening to books probably wouldn't have as good of an effect. Right. You mentioned, um, you know, customizing song lists and uh, genres and considering the, um, the older adult populations are burgeoning for the next 20 years, um, uh, did you take into consideration um, the future of this program in terms of how period effects might uh, relate to uh, their music preferences and how um, whether or not um, caregivers will be receptive uh, to their preferences? Mm -hmm. I guess is the best way. Yeah, you make a good point. I mean, the millennials aren't going to listen to the same 40s music. Typically, it's a music that is in early adulthood, like 20s or when they're getting married. Right. Um, and even childhood that really makes a difference. I just think, I, 
I, I wonder if, uh, for instance, when my generation uh, gets to that stage, whether or not, uh, I mean, obviously I can't predict <laughs> what, what, what uh, types of care are going to be available for, for people with, Alzheimer's, with Alzheimer's at that point. But um, you mentioned uh, disruptive behaviors, and I, it, a lot of my generation listens to very loud music. So if those are their preferences, I worry that you know other people, uh, other uh, other people who may not share the same preferences. Because I, I think really after the '80s, there's, there was a great divergence in uh, in the amount of genres that there were, that that uh, the music world offered and. So you had, you know, whereas in the early, early 20th century you had, you know, genre A, genre B, genre C, and now we have the whole alphabet times like three. Mm -hmm. so, so going forward as, as future professionals it's going to be interesting to mm -hmm. figure out how to balance those preferences and um, maintain the, the uh, the behavior, basically help help individuals, uh, you know, increase productive behaviors, but ensure the safety and well-being of everyone else, right. you know, at the same time. And it's going to be a, a, a. Do you have any? Uh, I think that's a really good point, and I would probably that's where the nature genre may come in handy, right. is because they, you do want the patient to be strong and independent, and yet if it's um, a, too assertive then it can cause you know, difficulties for the caregiver. And so you may need, instead of being the optimal preferred, you may need to have even two different tracks, one for when you want them up and engaged with others and moving, and another for when you need them calm for showering and such. Okay. Yes. Um, you mentioned that a, a caregiver said that um, oftentimes the residents are, are bored, which was sad to hear, um, and I, I thought, well, I, I wonder what kind of activities that and programming these two facilities have mm -hmm. to help you know, decrease the boredom, to help help uh, help the residents feel engaged, and how many of those activities are creative in nature, like this involved, you know, music or theater oh, I think or any kind of creative outlets, and how something like this might fit into the programming that already exists in these two places. I mean, both, both facilities plan to continue it. Um, but and I think they're both outstanding facilities with lots of activities already. Um, it's just in you know, 24 hours a day, sure. there are times when they're going to be bored. There can't be something going all of the time. Um, and if they can be playing soothing music, that can help. The I know the Masonic Home has a room that they go to that has pictures shine, shown on the wall like of old movie actors and lava lamps. You know, different, and it enables even those who, you know, may be married and in separate rooms. It enables them time to visit too. The activities director, I mean, already does. I've seen cooking with the group, letting each of them participate, um, art and other music oh, activities. Great. Something I was really impressed with was um, the kind of word games where they take a sentence and they choose, you know take the letters to come up with as many words as possible and get them engaged in using their mind like that. There's a couple of things. Um, it's so interesting to see the two different uh, models. That was really, um, really interesting. And I'm curious, one of the findings you just seem to uh, show in the paper is that the average sort of effects some shorter, some a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, has there been any, is, I guess, is that enough? I mean, I, you know, when I think about staff, I mean, yes, for me, if it's a particularly difficult resident, an hour of calm sleeping three times a week is probably just amazing and wonderful and they're happy to get it. I'm just curious if there's been any studies with, you know, that, that mirror that sort of hour average effect time, and then how often do you need to be doing this to see those consistent effects and well, lasting over time? And, and certainly they're going to change because the people are changing rapidly, right? Mm -hmm. 
that's the challenge even probably of personalizing the music because what they like this week and three weeks from now may be different. But I was curious about that effect and the lasting, both its length and then how to make it last. What do you have to do to get that long term back? Yeah, I mean, you're right. Most of the studies that I saw, it was three times per week for 30 minutes was average. Um, they found that after two or three months of doing that, that it would extend longer, the benefits. But if you stopped for another three months, then you'd be back at zero again. The first line of music, I think that it, it makes a huge difference, the more specific. And if you can ask family members and determine that, I don't think that that changes necessarily, uh, even though the dementia does. You, you may have a reduced effect as it gets more and more severe. So in these facilities, do you think they're doing that the three times a week consistently? Probably for some patients and not for others, depending on you know health and hearing challenges. Yeah, and I think, especially those who have their own rooms, it would be nice to for them to be able to have the music in the room with a speaker also. Yes. I just said. Um, Building on, on Dr. Baggett's um, uh, comment, I, when I was doing my practicum, I noticed that um, the uh, that residents uh, exhibit uh, very um, anxious behavior with respect to sundowner syndrome, and I was wondering if um, your team. Uh, Analyze it throughout the, the capstone experience whether or not um, you know music was listened to in the evening, say after dinner or something like that, and and they saw you know behavioral improvements and redu reduction in uh, anxious behaviors related to sundowner syndrome. I don't know that they did it. Well, there were some in the evening. Um, mostly, if it were later in the day, it was more around four or five o'clock. They did comment that there was a reduction with some of that. Was it statistically significant or? Yeah, there wasn't enough, enough to... of that for me to report that. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> Any other questions? I have one for you, Laura. For a student who may want to do um, a capstone similar to this mm -hmm. or any other recommendations you would have for students who are preparing their capstones? What, can you share a little bit about what you would recommend to them if they ask? Well, I've had a request for um, more of the group listening with CDs. So that would be something. And then to add the nature of music. Um, those are the two things. That and the photographs. Plus. Sharon makes a really good point about the length of time being longer. It would be nice to see uh, what longer music listening sessions would do. Although you know, it would vary from day to day. That's why length of you know, time for the session and the time of day, the patients, the, the, the residents' mood and their uh, health that day would determine. Some would say it's, you couldn't get the headsets on them that day and another would listen for 30 minutes, and then at another time they might be listening for an hour and not want you to take it away. So I don't know that if, you know, useful data could be compiled on the, those two things, the 